Welcome back. And now we're still talking about complexity theory, but we're talking about a very advanced part of that. And we're going to mention heuristics, NP, the field of NP, what NP is, what NP hard means, and what NP complete means. These are really complex ideas people usually don't see until they're seniors at the university level. So the next category of problems is solvable approximately but not optimally in reasonable time. So of the set of intractable problems, things that we just can't solve, some of them have pretty good approximate solutions. And we're pretty happy with that. So we don't have to have exactly the right answer. We can actually tap into those approximating algorithms and get a pretty good solution. Okay? So you often find these that are hard. These optimization problems are often hard when you're looking for find the best. Find the smallest. The exact smallest means there's only one. But if you can say, you know, it's pretty close to the best, pretty close to the smallest, if you're happy with that, then you can say it. So a lot of times you're, you're, you're characterizing these approximation algorithms by how fast they are and how close you get to the, to the answer. Okay? In the ideal case, very fast and exactly that. But you don't get that. You kind of have to trade off in some of these guys. So they're often trade offs of, these, of, of a class of approximating algorithms. Um, these are awesome. They can give you really good answers in pretty good time. So here's the knapsack problem on the far right. The knapsack problem formally is you have a knapsack that has a certain weight limit, and you have these differently valued boxes. And you're trying to stuff the most of those boxes in. Sorry, you're trying to maximize your profit, right? Find the best, find the most. Again, optimization. Find the most money you could ever get out of this store when you can steal as many of those boxes. There's a whole stack of these boxes, stack of each of those colors. How much could you in general get? So that's a really hard problem. But there's a great approximation algorithm, and we talked about this in our class locally, which is the greedy approach. Okay? And this is known as a heuristic. It's a technique that can get you to a pretty good solution. Okay? Sometimes the best solution, but a heuristic is kind of a general technique, a principle that's going to guide your solution. So here's the heuristic. The greedy approach is my heuristic I'm going to use for that, which is what? I line up the boxes by the most valuable, the kind of value per weight. Highest density of value, if you think about it, okay? And I line them up. And the greedy approach says, I stuff my bag with the most valuable ones first, which in this case happens to be the gold guys. Then the next one, then whatever gap I have left, if I'm full, when I'm, if I've used up all my space, I'm done. If I still have a gap, I then go to the next guy and fill up all those. If, there's, if I'm used up all my space, I'm done. Next, I go to the next guy. Keep going until, until I have no space left. That's it. That greedy will not give you an optimal solution for the knapsack problem. But often you can do pretty well, right? Often for this problem, you actually do do the optimal solution. So the greedy is a heuristic that you use to get you to that. Okay, that's awesome. Now, there's a bottom bullet which actually talks about a whole other topic, but it wasn't for me worth a whole slide, which is some problems are unsolvable. Like, what do you mean? Well, imagine a robot finding problem, right? Here's a robot and here's a goal. And I say, you write, write an algorithm to find the goal. OK, so right, right, left, and the algorithm, OK, if I get to a wall, I back up and make a left. Right. So you can imagine a robot finding algorithm. What if the goal is behind a wall? And there's no path from you to there. I don't care what kind of algorithm you give me, you can't get through the wall. So I can give you a problem, a robot finding problem, but set up the initial conditions so that the goal is behind a wall. And guess what? Whatever algorithm you're going to come up with, you can't go straight through the wall. So the answer is some problems actually are unsolvable, period. And that robot is a pretty good example of that. Okay. Some have no known, some problems have no known efficient solution. We talked about some problems are fast and have a very, are tractable and have a linear or quadratic or a polynomial solution. That's the first class we talked about. The second one is, well, they don't have that. They're intractable, but we do have a good approximating solution, possibly using a heuristic. Now, this is the third kind. And, and there's, al there's also the unsolvable kind. But now, here's the fourth kind, which is there are many, the ones that are really rich are the ones that we have no known solution for at all. Not even a good approximating guy. No known solution for. Okay? Here's a perfect example of that at the top right. The subset sum problem, which is here is a set of numbers, some positive, some negative. Find a subset of those that when you add them together, give you zero. Now, I'm telling you, you have to be zero. Getting close to zero doesn't count for this. 
So there is no approximating where you can get closer. No, it has to get to zero. So there really isn't an approximation algorithm that you can help here. You have to hit zero to make the scale balance in some sense. The number of positive numbers, the number of negative numbers, that weight has to exactly balance to make this work. I don't care about an approximation. I don't care that you got one away or a fraction away. It doesn't help. It has to be balanced. You can imagine that a, a, you know, a plane or a train or a, a, an, air, an airplane having to be balanced. It doesn't matter if you're a little off, it's still going to turn to the right if it's unbalanced. So you've got to have a balance to make it work. Okay? Here's, the, here's the exciting part. Here's the part that's the brain-busting cool thing. There is a family of these okay, that are really hard. And what we found is solving one of them can actually solve any of them. Let me show you why. Let me show you why that's possible. Okay? Here's the cool part. Because we can actually transform them back and forth. Like the problem that looks like it's about subset is really about finding a path of, of a traveling salesman who happens to be needing to visit all the cities and return back home. That's actually the same as subset sum, even though they look very different. Okay? Or here's a set of logic expression. You've had ands and ors, and all the inputs are zeros or ones, so true or false. And I want to know whether there's a particular input that will make this guy go true. But I might have to try all the combinations of that. So, so that's the satisfiability. Can I satisfy that expression with some, some input set of true, false, true, 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 false, false for expression? That looks very different. But can you see that it's similar to the subset sun problem, where you're choosing which of these to include or which not to include in your final thing? Just like you're choosing which of these lines to make true or false in your expression for a Boolean expression. Okay? So, because we can transform them back, any problem that can be transformed into another is called being reduced to. And what it means is, if I have a solution to one of them, like imagine I have a function that does it, then I really can wrap my problem, transform it, and then use your fast solution in the solution to my problem. That's called reducing it to that. So you find some awesome, cool algorithm. I'm going to borrow the algorithm, convert mine so it looks like the problem you're solving, have you solve your problem fast, and then use mine to solve mine fast. Isn't that cool? So I have to be able to have a polynomial, polynomial time reduction. So I have to be able to convert. And the conversion, this can't be an exponential conversion. It has to be a fast conversion. So now I've converted mine to yours. You solve your fast in polynomial time. I can get a polynomial time solution to mine overall. Right? That makes sense? 